Direct laryngoscopy is an aerosolizing procedure that poses a significant risk to healthcare professionals caring for patients infected with the COVID-19 virus. The aerosol box was created by Dr. Lai from Taiwan to provide an additional layer of protection to be used for intubation and extubation. The clear box adds an additional layer of protection and is a simple and cost-effective design. The anesthesiologists at Children's Hospital Los Angeles have made some small modifications to better suit their patients. All operating room staff should be dressed with the appropriate personal protective equipment. The core anesthesia team will have a minimum of one clean provider who will be assisting such as adjusting gas flows and administering medications. And the operator, who will be performing laryngoscopy and shall be designated contaminated. The following equipment is to be placed inside the airway box. The appropriately sized endotracheal tube with half sizes above and below with preloaded stylets in the packaging. The appropriately sized video laryngoscope blade. The appropriately sized regular laryngoscope blade plus handle. Two oral airways. A suction yank hour in its packaging at the side of the dominant hand of the operator. Eye tape and pre-cut endotracheal tube tape. Two Ziploc bags taped to either side of the box for disposing dirty materials. The appropriately sized face mask with the anesthesia circuit and HEPA filter attached. The following items will be outside the airway box. An infant bear hugger drape covering the inferior border of the airway box. A 1010 clear drape that will cover the two arm insertion sites at the superior border of the airway box. Before coming into the room, make sure that the patient has a working IV line. Assuming the patient is stable, provide adequate sedation before bringing the patient to the operating room. This will help calm the patient down and cause less coughing and contamination. Once onto the operating room table, the patient should be identified as usual. Before induction, the operating room team will then discuss the conduct of the case. Next, all individuals, except for the core airway team, should leave the room. Once the patient is adequately sedated, slide the patient into the airway box, The operator will then place the mask over the patient's face. The assistant will then turn up oxygen flows and begin to pre-oxygenate. This will be done until oxygen end tidal levels are to at least 90%. During the induction, minimize mask ventilation. A rapid sequence intubation is preferred. The mask should be held with two hands to maximize the seal. The assistant then administers the induction medication. The operator applies eye tape and is careful not to remove the mask. Once the patient is adequately paralyzed, the assistant will turn off oxygen flows and the operator will use video laryngoscopy to intubate the patient. At any time during induction, if the patient has copious secretions or vomiting, the operator will suction the oral cavity and position appropriately to prevent aspiration. Once the cuff is past the cords, remove the stylet.
inflate the endotracheal tube cuff and hook up the anesthesia circuit. The assistant must wait and then be told when to resume gas flow and will ventilate as instructed by the operator. Once CO2 is confirmed, the operator will then tape the endotracheal tube and discard any materials into the Ziploc bags. The operator next will remove upper extremities from the arm insertion points. We'll then remove outer gloves or surgical sleeves and then cover the arm holes with the plastic drape. The box may remain in place during the case depending on the anesthesiologist and surgeon preference. Once the air turnover time has been completed, the additional staff may enter the room. For emergence and extubation, a deep extubation is the preferred method. If an awake extubation is required, the goal will be to minimize coughing, emergence delirium, and agitation. If the patient is at risk for self-injury, have additional sedation medication readily available or consider removing the box prior to extubation with the proper precaution. When ready to extubate, the assistant will turn the flows off. The operator will extubate and discard the endotracheal tube. Once extubated, apply the face mask and tell the assistant to turn the oxygen flows back up using low flow oxygen and monitor the patient using standard monitors for the remainder of the emergence. Keep the airway box on as long as possible until leaving the operating room to minimize contamination during emergence.